Welcome to Nerd Alert, everyone. We have a fantastic show for you this week featuring Star Wars, not dressed for it, but Star Trek, and lots of other fun, exciting things. But first, I want to introduce my special guest for this week. It is Alan Sizzler Kistler. Alan is a New York Times bestselling author, and he is, of course, the host of the podcast Crazy Sexy Geeks, which he is uh, wearing the colors for right now. <laughs> and Alan, you're making appearances and making your rounds, of course. Yeah, yeah, I was just at Kamikaze. I was at seven panels uh, at Kamikaze. I did one. <laughs> and I thought that was a bit much. Yeah, uh, it was, I mean, it was, it's a great con. It's, it's a great thing to do. And I'm doing a signing uh, for my books in The Walking Dead Psychology, which I contributed a chapter to mm -hmm. at Mysterious Galaxy later this month in San Diego. And uh, I am contributing chapters also to the upcoming books on um, uh, Star Trek Psychology. Wow, perfect. Yep. That is very perfect for what we're about to talk about, uh, which is, I'm sorry I'm not dressed for it, but the new Star Trek series will be premiering in 2017. Um, almost most of, the, most of it on CBS All Access, as opposed to being uh, broadcast on uh, traditional outlets, which is pretty interesting and new uh, for, for CBS to decide to do. Um, so people have been waiting and waiting for a new Star Trek to come along. I think a lot of the obstruction has been the films and divvied up rights between Paramount and CBS and what have you. Uh, but it looks like the time has finally come for people awaiting a brand new generation, but the, not the next generation. <laughs> the next, next generation. The next, next Possibly. generation. Maybe, maybe sort of. What do you think of this news? I think it's fantastic. I'm honestly, I'm surprised it took this long to get a new Star Trek series. With the, with the reboot movies that came out, mm -hmm. you've got, you've really got a whole new slew of fans who were introduced to it, who maybe didn't get into it before, whether it was because they thought the atmosphere wasn't right for them or they thought there was too much history that they, could, mm -hmm. they couldn't get into it. Now, now we've got so many people who are into Star Trek that weren't before. You've got so many people who saw the new movies and then went back and explored Next Generation and Deep Space Nine and the original show mm -hmm. and, and the whole world. And I mean, my, my main question is, which... Which universe is this? Because technically there are now two Trek universes. Uh, maybe even more <clears throat> than two. What the, the wording for this has been pretty interesting, uh, which is that it will not be related to the upcoming film uh, Star Trek Beyond, but they didn't mention the other two Star Trek films that have already been produced. And they right. did say that this will feature new civilizations, new characters, but they didn't say that old civilizations and old characters might not make an appearance. So I'm very curious to see where this could go, and specifically when this could go. Right. Is is this going to be, you know, sort of sort of filling in a gap between new continuity Kirk and whoever new continuity Picard will be, or is? <laughs> oh is this, no! I didn't even consider that. Yeah. What? Because <laughs> there's a big gap of <clears throat> there's but a big gap of about a century be Sir between. Can Patrick them. Stewart again? And and just have mm -hmm. him play play himself the in the reboot. And then have adult Will Wheaton as Wesley Crusher. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that would be another direction you could go, actually. You, you could go past where Voyager left off mm -hmm. and, and say, you know, go 50 years further than that. So you have a new political landscape and can introduce new characters. I've heard people say they'd like to see maybe after Dominion mm -hmm. Wars when there's a lot of rebuilding going on. No, Federation's not, you know, at their peak. Uh, Klingons are also working on that. Um, I'm not really sure when I would like to see the new continuity, to be honest. Well, it would be really cool to see, you know, post-Dominion War, what's happening. I, I don't see them necessarily going for that. I could see them making up their own war and saying, you know, if, if they do have it in the original continuity, saying it's 100 years later and another war came in, mm. messed everything up, and now we're showing you the remains. So, so sort of like how the Doctor Who series created the Time War, so that... You sort of streamlined everything. You don't have to worry about where the Time Lords are and all that jazz because so much stuff has happened. It's a new playing field. Mm -hmm. I see that more likely to happen. Okay. Um, I have a, What I'm more focused, focused on is, I think, the structure of the episodes. Yeah. I'm, I have, I don't know, maybe it's a little weird, but I would like to see something different than one ship, one crew. You know, I agree with that. Focus. Like maybe do a split focus or, or split point of view and... Maybe, you know, like how Game of Thrones does it? Yeah. That's what I would like to see. And and actually, that would be great because something we've so rarely seen in any of the Star Trek uh, things is Earth. What is mm -hmm. Earth really like? We keep seeing Starfleet Academy. 
that's about it. And yeah. the surrounding areas. You right, know? right. And Picard okay. visits his brother at one point. <laughs> but, you know, we never really explored too much about Earth culture. And especially now you can explore things about Earth culture and Federation culture mm -hmm. they didn't touch on before. Like, what are transgender issues in, in the Federation? What are... Well, we're uh, in a future where things are exceedingly progressive, I yeah. would assume. And that's what I think that's what makes one of the, the things that makes... Star Trek, you know, a fantastic sci-fi and a fantastically positive sci-fi. And it would be and it would be great to actually see that. You know, it's as much as I love science fiction, sometimes you get lost in the metaphor mm -hmm. and you won't actually talk about the real issue. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, this is just like racism. But let's actually talk about racism sometimes. It could happen. I mean, Star Trek is very well <laughs> known for uh, tackling those issues ahead of their time, if you look back to the original series. Audience, what would you like to see the new Star Trek handle, and where would you like to see them boldly go? Let us know below in the comments, and please like and subscribe for more.